All right, a few people are still showing up. Um, let me let uh, a few other people are logging in here. Let me get them to log in. Make sure they can hear everything. All right, so last class we went over inputs, as I said, um, and how to kind of see what the Arduino was seeing. Uh, this class we're going to look at a special um, electrical component or a unique electrical component. And I'm also going to throw inputs in there as well and um, stuff like that. For those of y'all just showing up, I do apologize. I'm sick as a dog right now. Um, so my voice is going out and I might sneeze and I might have to leave the room, but I'll let you know if I do. All right. All right. Let's keep going. So today we're going to look at potentiometers, um, which is also known as a variable resistor. Now, I am going to refer to a potentiometer as a pot because it's easier, and I don't like saying low words. So I am going to say when I say potentiometer, it's going to be a pot. It's going to be a simple circuit. Um, we're not going to use the circuit from last class, so if you have it hooked up, you can go ahead and unhook it. Um, in the potentiometer, it comes to be very important when you're doing certain things uh, because the potentiometer, as I said, is a variable resistor, meaning it's a resistance value that changes based off how far you turn it. It's used a lot in calibrations of things, um, uh, sound actually, like pretty much the, to, make a, um, to make your stereo go up or down, the volume of the up go up or down. It's pretty much, it's a lot of the older ones, uh, it's just a potentiometer. That's what's doing it. It's, um, you're, you're changing the flow of electricity. You're increasing the resistance or decreasing the resistance, thereby increasing the sound, uh, the voltage, or increasing or decreasing the voltage, so that way you get more and more sound. Uh, what happened to Avery? Why did he leave? One second, y'all. Uh, Um, so there's many different types of potentiometers. Uh, the one we're looking at here is the rotary construction uh, that's based off a of wiper and uh, and as the wiper here changes, the actual resistance changes because there's, there's two electrical factors that factor into resistance and that's the voltage and the current. There's also four physical characteristics that can affect resistance, and that's the length of it, the cross-sectional area of it, the temperature, and the material. All through, all four things change or can affect the actual amount of resistance it has. Um, so here is our circuit we're going to hook up today. So go ahead and start hooking that up. Mine's already hooked up. I will make special note, pay attention. Make sure that you have uh, the ground should already be hooked up. We are going to be using this main power line again. Uh, we're going to be using that, I think, for a while here. So you can go ahead and actually, remember I told you, always make sure that this ground is hooked up. But for the rest of these labs, let's make sure that we always have these 5 volt hooked up as well. Raise your hands when you have this circuit hooked up. That is a 330 ohm resistor for the LED. Oh, and one other thing. Instead of plugging it into pin 13, I want y'all to plug it into pin 6. Instead of pin 13, I want you to plug it into pin 6. So if we're going to change, uh, I'm going to try to do something kind of cool, cool with it. If we get time. All right, cool, Avery. So raise your hands when you have that circuit. Put your hands up. <laughs> Put your hands up. 
Yeah, and I know I'm I know I'm kind of out of it right now, but I'll I'll get through this. We'll we'll all get through this together. Avery, I think you got me sick. I'm going to blame you. <laughs> uh, who else just showed up? Andrew, no. Jaden. Hey, Jaden, have you got your Arduino working yet? I'm going to stay over tonight to help Avery out with a few things. So you're more than welcome to stay too, so I can try to help you out as well. Instead of instead of pin 13 for the LED, instead of 13, I want you plugged into pin 6. Pin 6 of the Arduino. I'm going to try to do uh, mapping. We're, we're going to see if I have time for that. All right, and raise your hands when you all have this circuit hooked up. Plus is the plus is the long leg, correct. Plus is the long leg. Positive plus whatever. The anode. Or wait, it might be cathode. I, I never remember the names of them. Long leg goes to power. That's what I remember. And the potentiometer looks similar to what it's looking like on the uh, on the screen there. It's a little thing with the arrow. It should be in your kits. All right, Jaden. I'm gonna try to. If you can stay over, Jaden, I'll, I'll try to see what we can do with your with your system. Yeah, raise your hands when you're done with the circuit so I'll know. All right, I'm about to excuse me. I will be right back while some of y'all are hooking stuff up. I need more OJ. How many people have got it done already? If you need help, let me know. I'll try to walk you through whatever it is that's get, tripping me up. Oh, where's Gabe at, Manuel? The blue thing here, this is the potentiometer. You should have that in your kit. It's like a square base with a round top with a arrow on it. Avery, you still using Chrome?
Are the pins for the potentiometer vertical or horizontal? So you should have... Good question. You should have like one pin would be here, one pin would be here. Well, it's actually like right here, one pin here, and then one pin here. So, yeah, it should not, you should not have a pin here, a pin there, and a pin there, because that would make it all in one line of, um, one line of electricity, something. So, vertical, yeah, vertical, sorry. Make sure you have, the, make sure that the middle one is going back to the Arduino, the middle pin should be going back to the Arduino. Technically, it doesn't matter, but you might get slightly different numbers. Does it matter what way the arrow is pointing? No, it does not matter as long as you have these three pins in a vertical fashion. That's the only thing that matter. All right. Andrew, Zach, Manuel, how y'all coming? Oh, there it is. There's shot. Shot some hands up. All right. Let's start coding this thing. All right, cool. So we're going to use a slightly different code. Um, I am to show you the main code, the original code. All right. So here is the code I want y'all to use. Now, go ahead and start typing this thing out. Except for right here, LED pin, make sure you change this to 6. All right, because that, that's something that we switched here. And remember from previous classes, as long as I denote it here, it'll act the same. Um, I do want y'all to type it out. I know, like, in some classes, I just copy and paste. But by typing it out, you do... I think you learn a little bit more about how the syntax works, how the folk code works. If you get an error, you get an error. I mean, uh, tell you a story, true story. I had probably a, uh, uh, I don't know, 500, five to 600 lines of code uh, that I typed out. Um, but then I was troubleshooting it because something wasn't quite working right. And... Anyway, in the process of me troubleshooting, something happened that it would not, it, it stopped compiling. I mean, what the heck happened? I spent four hours trying to find why it wasn't compiling. Turns out I had one number that had like, uh, it was like one million. Because I forgot what I was doing with it, but it was like one and then six zeros behind it. Six, yeah. Turns out I changed out one of the O's, one of the zeros for a capital O. And it took me four hours to realize that uh, that Andrew Jones, where are you from, sir? Oh, I'll, I'll probably do know each other. Y'all both from Hickory. Avery Lineberger and Andrew Jones are both from Hickory. Avery says he knows you. Went to school together, so y'all don't go to school together anymore. Put your hands up when you have the code and go ahead and upload it and then I'll walk you through the code after we get done with that and then I'll show you this slight change I want you to make too.
Kevin, you just on the ball today, ain't you, sir? Did you look at the PDS before class? I was talking to Kevin, Jaden. <laughs> All right. I know when I get done the classes, I'm down in half a bottle of night when I'm going to bed. Oh, that was in response to Kevin's comment he made, y'all. I'm not just talking crazy. At least not yet. Alright. You don't need to put in all the comments, y'all. So if that's what's slowing you down, you don't necessarily need all those. Remember the comments are these little forward slashes here. This is not read by the code at all. That's just for you as a programmer or programmers that come after you. Where's Kevin? You got mine, Kevin? I can't remember. Yes. So what happens with your circuit now? What does it do? Well, as I just potentiometer, the light goes on and off, or light dims. Light dims, or does it start going faster or slower? Well, it starts going faster and slower. Okay, cool. <laughs> Jay Naz asks, LED is blinking, am I the master of the Arduino? No. God, you make an LED blink doesn't make you a master yet. I'll get you there, though. Yep. Why'd you hear my glass? Yeah. All right. So. All right. As y'all keep typing, I need to. I'm gonna go ahead and explain this a little bit more. Um. All right. So. Of course, up here, only thing we're doing is we're declaring uh, values for sensor pins and LED pins, and we're assigning them. Um, we're assigning the sensor pin to A0. I could put that there, and it's the same thing. All right. Um, an LED pin, which is uh, pin 6 in our case. And then a sensor value set to zero. Now the sensor value, this is known as what's called initializing. The only thing we're doing here is really initializing um, the value that we're going to use later on. Now here in the void setup, oh, of course, the only thing we're doing is we're setting pin modes to input or output, right? And the LED, of course, is going to be our output because that's our light. Now, remember, we keep using LEDs because they are a very good indicator of power or even the signal. But remember, this LED can be anything to a um, uh, this LED can be anything from a motor to a uh, to a servo to a um, to a nuclear bomb. 
Okay, so it's just it's, it's just simulating power. That's all it's doing. Don't go making nuclear bombs. That's bad news. Nukes are bad. Okay. All right, and then so here now here is where we actually use the value of sensor value, and what we're using is the analog read function. Now this analog read function, what this is doing is reading an analog signal, and I'll show you more. Uh, don't <laughs> uh, show you more about that when we get to the serial print of it. Uh, and we're just using sensor pin, and here that of course the digital write. That's just a on and off. That's just five volts, zero volts, five volts, zero volts. Uh, whoops. The um, and here we're taking that the the value for the pot that we're getting for the analog read, and we're doing placing it in sensor value. So raise your hand if you don't have this code typed out. Right. So here's the adjusted code for those of you that already have it typed out because I want you to actually see the values now Avery this is something you've never or actually you've never seen a few of these things um, I'll break them down for you after class a little bit more but this is how I communicate with the Arduino right there and I want you to print out the value there so it's actually just two more lines of code I want you to add All right, so your light's not flashing on and off, Avery. Um, all right, let's figure out why. Are you plugged into pin six on the Arduino or are you plugged into pin 13? For the LED, by the way, for the LED. 13, all right, let's move that to six first. And then change, change this to 13, or change this to six, if you have it 13. All right, here's the other code, by the way, y'all. Who, who is not done with the code yet? <laughs> All right, if your LED isn't not lighting up, let's make sure that you have this here should say six because I told you to plug it into six. I'm changing things up here a little bit. So here you can see I have pin six here. All right, and if that's still not the case, I'm gonna make sure that your your um, this if something else is with your circuit. If you if this line's not turning orange, then you misspelled something, Jay. All right, who's Zach? How you coming? I 
can't get my OED to light up. All right, so you got the long leg is associated with the one that you got plugged into pin six, right? Wait, what? The long leg of the LED, you have a wire going into where that long leg is, and the wire is also going into pin six, correct? Um, no. Okay, well, no. where is that wire plugged into? The wire, the LED is uh, the wire closest to the LED is plugged going from uh, J twenty to A zero. All right. Well, that's your problem. All right. So the let's look at the circuit again. Put this. Put this back up. All right. So you're telling me you got this wire here plugged into A0. The wire that's going to the LED you got plugged into A0? Oh, yeah. All right. Then that's your problem. Let's move that wire to pin 6. And Wait, then... No, no. It's plugged into pin 13. All right. Let's move it to pin 6 first. Okay. Right. Now you're this J6? one. What's that? Or wait, no. Six right here. The, on the yard wheel. Plug it into pin six. Okay. This part right here. All right. Okay. Now on the pot though, on the pot, make sure you have this wire, the middle one, is going to A zero. I'm going to A0. Yep. All right. And you have, on each side, you got it on positive and negative, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Put it up. This should work. Make sure your code says pin 6, too. It does. Okay. Uh, Jay, did you get your print line working? No, or are you still not lighting up? All right. Do you have this serial print function in here? In your code? Uh, yep. All right. And you have this line in there, right? Uh-huh. All right, so let's hit your serial monitor in Avery. This is how you actually see the numbers here. You hit this button here, serial monitor should bring up a screen that looks like this. All right, now, Zach, do you see numbers going across your screen? I do. Are they supposed to be changing? Do they, well, turn the potentiometer, do the numbers change? Oh. Uh, yep, it looks like they're changing. All right, so it, it should go from pretty much, I think, zero, to 1,023, I think, you see. Yep. Yep, all right, so that's working. So now the only issue I see now is here in your actual circuit. So you must have not have the LED grounded with the resistor or the wire is not plugged into pin 6 or you have a bad LED. Let me check on the CD. Uh, I've got the LED plugged in the right place. Oh. No, I don't. I don't know. Cool. What was it, Jay? Avery, did you see how I got the see? Was I? Uh, I was able to see those numbers. Are you on my screen? Alright. So I added this line of code just to help you can communicate with the Arduino. I'll break that more down for you after class. And then I put in this line of code here. Are you copy? 
And once I add those two lines of code, what I can do is I can hit Serial Monitor here. It allows me to see the, the values here. And you see here, if I adjust my pot, my numbers have changed as well. All right, Manuel, yes, the LED is supposed to be blinking. Zach, how you coming? Good. You working? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. How the LED? Yeah, LED was wrong. All right. Manuel, if your code, if your light's not blinking, let's double check your circuit. Hit your serial monitor to see if you get numbers. Right? That way I know your pot's working and I know the circuit for your pot is working. All right, whose lights are blinking? Raise your hands. <laughs> that put your hand up if your light is blinking now. All right, so, Manuel, if you're getting the numbers, that's telling me you either, you, you have, I want this wire here that's saying that I'll plug in the 13, I want to plug it to pin 6. Alright, not 13, pin 6. And then I want you to uh, make sure that up here in your code it also says LED pin 6. Alright, so I'll switch you out your LEDs then. And make sure your LED is grounded too. Don't forget to ground the LED with the resistor. Alright. For everybody else that has it working, what I want you to try to do without me helping you, and I'm about to do some things here. I want you to try to make it so that your LED Instead of it controls how fast it blinks, I want the LED to turn on or off based off what the pot is reading. So if the pot is doing reading one number, it turns on. If it's not reading that number, I want the LED to try to shut off. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way because I'm going to do something for the student. One of you here. Okay. One second, um, Avery, I see your, I see your comment. Hang on, um, all right, give me one second, Avery, I'm, I'm working, I'm trying to get you there, I'm just trying to redo somebody else's code, and I'm going to send you this.
All right, check your check your inbox, Avery. All right. So again, while I was, uh, looking for you to get Avery, let me know if you if you got the code that I just sent you. Uh, I was looking for you to make it so that your LED turns on or off based off a value that your pot is getting. Who thinks they were able to get that so far? Glad you're back, Mr. Nance. Missed you. All right, what didn't work about it, Avery? Did you get an error message? I'm going to do it at the same time I have y'all doing it here. And I'm just using this code here. Uh, so, I am going to do. The do. What am I going to do? Give me one second. I can't think right now. Avery, what, what about it did, did not work? Did you get an error message or, or did you get something else? All right. Give me one second. Let me type this out, and then I'll just send you what I'm doing here, and then I'll break it down for you, all right? So here, I'm going to give myself some space. So what did I say? I said I want you to, the LED to turn on or off based off what the sensor value is reading, based off what the potentiometer is. Now, in this case, the value I'm going to use, I'm just going to use 430 because that's the value I'm seeing on my screen right now. All right, so I'm going to go hit. I'm going to set what's called a threshold. All right, threshold variable. Did I spell that right? Threshold, something like that, equals 430. All right. So, because I'm lazy and I don't want to type too much and I'm not feeling good, I'm just going to delete that. And I'm going to delete sensor value here. Keeping everything else the same. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to give myself some space. And I'm going to say if sensor value. Oops. If sensor value is less than threshold. I spelled it right both ways. I spelled it, yep. Less than threshold. All right. Do that. So I'm going to put my semicolons, or not my semicolon, my brackets there. Give myself, I usually like to tab everything over when I do stuff like this. Here. Now, else. Else, do this. All right. There we go. That should work. Let's see if I get this to compile first. Um, Let's 
don't know fluid English. Like, go one way, turns on. Go the other way, it shuts off. That works out perfectly. Copy. Here's the code. All right. All right, so I just sent y'all the code. Let me know if that's working. Um, Avery, let me know if you can see those numbers yet. If not, you know, we'll, we'll get you there after class. So I think, by the way, one reason, one thing we're going to do is when we get to the actual robot, we probably are going to be using this exact same concept to uh, make the robot do stuff. All right, so... Let's look at, let's see. I want to, uh, which time do I have? About 15 minutes. All right. Um, all right. All right. And first off, raise your hands if, if your LED is turning on or off. Like, it's not flashing now, it's just going on and off based off the code. Manuel, Avery, how y'all coming? Jaden, I know you're, you have issues over there. Um, Jane asked me what are we doing after Arduinos right now dude I, I don't know my, my brain's not working that well if you would have asked me yesterday I could have told you I, don't, I forgot I'm taking it's taking every bit of my power to not go up right now. All right, very well. How you coming? Oh yeah, you're still typing your own. I saw that. All right. So. <laughs> So there is another, there's another concept here, and I honestly forgot how to do it, so I'm going to look up. Let me erase those random red lines. Range that value zero to zero 
255. Yep, okay, that's what we're going to do right there. All right. Now, do me a favor. I want y'all to save this code as something. Save this code so you'll have it. Save it so you know where it's at. So we will, I will come back and reference this code again. I do want this code to be saved. All right, so file, save as, um, save as pot, save as potentiometer code or something like that. Save this code as something. All right, we will be referencing this, <laughs> um, this um, thing. Gorilla. Oh, my Gmail. Yep, he's a very angry gorilla. All right. So, next code. Now, last class we looked at the, here we're using nothing but the digital right to turn the LED on and off. But last class, we looked at the analog right, right? Which, in that, in that I kept referencing what was called PWM with that, or pulse width modulation. Or, that might not be last class. It, it, it was one class. I know I mentioned it. All right. Avery, I know you might be a little bit lost here. I'll, I'll get you caught up, sir. All right. So here, I'm going to use that same concept. So, so this time, instead of the LED flashing or turning on and off, it's actually going to fade in and out, in and out based off what the LED is, or based off the sensor reading. Now, there's several different ways of doing this. Again, save this code, save this code, save this code, save this code. What are you supposed to do with this code? What are you supposed to do with this code that's on the screen right now? Got two correct answers. I'm not moving on until I get more answers. <laughs> save this code exactly. Save it. Save it. Save it. Okay, cool. Now I, I I know this code very well. I don't need to save it, but here. All right. So and that's the reason why I also had you plug it in to pin six this class because I wanted to use the PWM. Remember those little squiggly marks on the Arduino are the PWMs. All right, so here I just deleted my, essentially my if statement. Now, I'm keeping everything else the same, but here I want to make it so that my LED pin, um, the pin is fading in and out based off what, um, based off the potentiometer, all right? So there's several different ways of doing this, and I'll show you the first way real quick. Analog right, right? This is, we weren't using digital right, now I'm using analog right. Now, the first number, or the first variable I'm going to put in there, of course, is the LED pin. And I'm going to hit comma, and I'm going to put in, and now, last class, I had you put in some number of 255 or whatever right here, right? But here, I don't want you to put 255. Remember, I want the value that how bright the light is or is not is based off the uh, sensor value. Here, so I'm actually just going to copy that, and I'm going to paste it in here. Whoops, I the wrong button. Dang, come in. Now i got to copy it again. Copy and paste. And I'm going to upload this, and it should kind of work right now. It's still not going to work the way I want it to. Yeah, it's called potentiometer. All right, so if I upload this code as is, let me see if I get this thing working right. So it, 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 as you turn it, it is it does work, right? You'll see that it does work. However, it doesn't work quite well. What should be happening is if you, if you take it all the way to zero, let me put up my serial monitor. All right, so here I'm all the way at zero, and my LED shuts off. I can turn it up slowly, and you can see that kind of gets a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter. Keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. 
But remember, the, the max range value is 255. That's as high as the analog right can go. Once you go past analog right, you have what happens. It's called... Um, ooh, it's called... Oh, boy. You have an error there called... Uh, oh, boy. So when you go past the set range of values that a certain function is capable of, and it resets itself, you have an error value or an error called... Oh, man. You have an error called... Uh, give me, give me, give me words. Somebody give me words. I need words. Any words. Just give me words. You have an error called, uh, propagation. You have a propagation error. All right. Meaning that you go outside the, the range, the values that are confined to a certain function. All right, so when you go, when you load this code up as is, you go all the way to zero, your light shuts off. When you take this, take the potentiometer up slowly, you kind of see the light get brighter and stuff like that, right? And there is a way to fix that. So I am to come here, I come above my analog right, and create. I'm going to create a new value. I am going to call it it. Just because I forgot it, I'm going to call it prop. All right, propagation. It propagation equals equals map. Open parentheses. So this is a mapping function. This is actually gets to be pretty important here. Uh, mapping function 0 to, or wait, I put in, first I have to put in what I'm mapping, and that's going to be my sensor value. Sensor value here. And I am going to label this. From 0 to 1,023, and 0 to 255. Oops. Make sure you put the commas, but not semicolons here, like that. And just to make sure I'm getting the right values, I'm going to put a serial print function here. Line and up like so. Upload it, and this should constrain my values. Hopefully, hopefully I did this right. All right, so I have two variables going across my screen. I have the initial, the sensor value here. And then I have prop over here. All right. And right now they're both just set to zero. So as I go up, yep, you can see that sensor value is staying at 35, while the prop, which is what I'm using for the mapping function, is still there. It's kind of like stuck at eight. Now, if I take this all the way up to 1023, it should go no higher and 255, and it does. All right, does everybody kind of see what I was doing here, how I'm taking this value, I'm taking the sensor value, I'm using this function here, I am using this to constrain these values that I get from zero to 1,023, but instead I want it to be zero to 255. So there's a simple mathematical function going on underneath there, but now, you shouldn't see the propagation error because you constrained the value. So you can take the LED, um, 
or you turn the pot all the way up and down and it should not it should just only get brighter all right is that is that working out for everybody does everybody kind of understand that i want you to save this code too save this code it's not working all right yeah a lot of people say it's not working all right send me error messages what error messages are you getting In function void setup, LED pin was not declared. Sensor value was not declared. Sensor pin was not declared. You, looks like you don't have all of these right here, Avery. Did you delete all of these up here? Who else was not working? Jay, that's weird. I'm not on YouTube. All right, so you're not getting any error messages, Jay, but yet the LEDs not lighting up. Oh no, the LEDs are lighting up fine. It's just still restarting every time I if I spin it, it doesn't just. All right, what value are you getting here? Um, I don't know. It's moving really, really fast, and I'm not. It's not separated at all. It's just one number. Well, here, separate. Make sure you put this slash t in there. Yeah. Like oh, the slash is the wrong way. Basically that. All right, it's eight o'clock. I don't know my rules, and I am staying over to help Jaden and uh, Avery tonight. So y'all yeah, more than welcome to stay over, but I'm really just gonna kind of go over some few things we've already done. Jay, how you coming? Talk to me. Uh, I got it now. It was just, why, why did you, all right. Yes, I'm just helping Avery. Turn the knob. Light phase goes back to full brightness before I turn the knob way down. Yep, that's should, pretty much what happened. It had me happening, Zach. So you turn the knob all the way up, and it goes to pretty much its full brightness. And you should see 255 over here. And if you turn it all the way down, now there is a little bit of a, uh, uh, it's sometimes kind of like as you're turning it, it'll, it'll kind of go out. That's just because of the potentiometer. But yeah, that should be exactly what, ha what is happening. All right. So here. All right, Avery, can you plug in your microphone for me? All right, cool. All right. I'm making you a presenter, um, Avery. I want to see your screen. All right, and I'll be right back.
All right, maybe I'll still be right back. That, 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 that. Sorry about that, we had to get a refresh of it. All right. So. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, give me a minute, Avery. All right. So. I can have you hook up a different circuit, but I think I can everything that we covered in class based off these two codes. Okay. So, I want you to re-upload the code instead of potentiometer. That's going to be our first one that we're going to examine. Yeah, okay. So, re-upload that. Now. Okay, it's up. Cool. So, now the only main thing now I don't think you'll recognize is the first note. I'm using the input. See where it has pin mode, sensor pin, and as an input? Uh, actually, there's a, since we've redone my webinar thing, there's a glitch now. So every time I minimize your screen, which I just accidentally did, uh, I can't get it back. Wait, which screen? Because I'm looking at your screen. No, the screen that... Aren't you still sharing your screen? No, you are the presenter right now. Oh, well, that's probably why. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like... Every, Everybody can see your screen if everybody was still here. David's here. He can see your screen. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're you are the man in charge right now. Okay. All right. So we, we you saw an output before. You made the LED lights show on and off, right? So I just kind of we just kind of keep building upon that. And. Uh, uh, to start it out, the, 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 the first through three lines of code of, on potentiometer, only thing there is I'm declaring values, all right? And it does not matter what words those say, uh, sensor pin, I can make it say Goku if I wanted to, or whatever, it does not matter. As long as I keep using that same syntax throughout the code. Now, the pin mode input, now that is just, I am reading the input. And the serial dot begin ninety six hundred. Now the serial dot begin is a special fu function because it turns orange. Uh, and orange we know. Uh, the ninety six hundred is what's known as the baud rate, or how fast it communicates back and forth um, okay. between you and the computer. Now that number is based off a whole bunch of different things, but the majority of the codes you will ever use will always use ninety six hundred. But there's there's different codes for different reasons. And, uh, okay. Uh, the this class. Uh, the sensor value equals analog reason. Go ahead and pull up your serial monitor. Hit that uh, magnifying glass off to the side. The magnifying oh. glass. Hit that. That. Yeah. All right. Now, let's kind of spread them out a little bit for me. So, the final, the potentiometer on one side and the, there you go. All right. Well, you can't oh. see this panel. There. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. I'm good. There you go, perfect. All right. So the analog read, that is just the, and we're actually reading a number. Now that zero, that 1,023 you're seeing, right, go yeah. ahead, turn, turn your pot so, so it gives me a different number. It's not moving. You did. It was moving. You did. It was moving earlier. It's not moving anymore. All right, re-upload that code. Something, something happened. No, no, not that one, the other one. Nope, 
now. Is someone moving? Are you turning the? Are you adjusting the pot? Yeah, I'm turning it. Uh, the lights flashing on and off as I turn it in different directions, but the numbers aren't changing. It doesn't look like the numbers are repeating really fast either. Yeah. Is this what's that at the bottom? That's like a, um, that's a um, uh, machine code uh, assembly language functionality. Okay. So like, there's binary, then there's uh, machine code, and then there's the words we see. And you're just seeing mm -hmm. part of the uh, machine code there or the assembly language. All right. So why are we getting numbers? Right. Try uploading that other code again. Let's see what's going on here. Sensor value threshold. You should not, that should be working. And your light is turning on and off based off the... Yeah. Yeah, I'll put the other code. This, this wouldn't work. Uh, there was something wrong with this. I couldn't figure it out. Because you got left pin up top and LED pin down below. Look at, look in uh, your second line. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. Yeah, that, that helps. That, that helps, you're right. Oh, and so... Look. Hit proc. Put a comma between the 0 and the 255. And it's all the simple ones I keep messing up. <laughs> Still no. I'll put a comma between your sensor value and zero. Mm -hmm. Alright. Always get another issue. There. Get in there. Don't worry about it. Uh -huh. Oh, it says sensor value, put prop for that uh, for that last line, for that second word. So instead of sensor value, it's put prop? Put prop. Like propagation. Pop. Yeah, P O. That's what it is. Peel. Okay. Now maybe. Come on. Huh. There you go. Now I think you got it. Okay, got it. All right. Now let's see your serial monitor. Now what? Let me oh. see serial monitor. In this. Yep. All right. Now I'll adjust zeros. Your Turn your pot. Still not changing. What is happening? It worked earlier. For a minute. The lights, the, the lights coming on and on as I, as I turn it, it gets brighter. It, I, that's working right. But this isn't. Oh, right in the bottom right corner where you see baud, change that to ninety six hundred. Yeah. That's why. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess you're a Yep. There. <laughs> there you go. There it is. All right. Cool. Oh, numbers. That's where. All right. Let's go back to the other code because that's the rule one. Uh, I really need to show you more stuff on. Okay. I'll upload the other code again. Make sure you when you app, check your baud rate when you uh, after done uploading. Okay. Yeah, I, sound, I know I sound a little bit better, but trust me, I don't feel better. All right. Uh, it works. <laughs> what was I going to do? What was I going to say? I was gonna say it's I don't know. Um, okay. All right. So here we go. All right. So that serial dot begin. Now that's what's communicating back and forth. Um, and let's go to where you have serial dot print line, right? I want you to go one line above that. See that? Here. Yep. Type in serial dot print, but leave out the ln. Mhm. Mm uh, what's missing? Something missing. No, it's not capitalized. There. there. Now put uh, space parentheses equal or quotation marks. Um, pot equals pot space equals space. No pot. What's pot? I don't know pot. that one. A pitcher. Oh, you don't even know what that is. <laughs> Well, I don't even know how to spell that either, but that's why I said just put pot, P-O-T, as in the flower pot. Okay. Base equals 
space, close the quotation, nope, equals. Okay, and then quotation, that. nope, put a quotation mark at the end of this thing, up. right there, quotation, and then close it, and then semicolon. All right, re-upload the code. Okay. Alright, let me see the hit the serial monitor. Whoa. See the difference? Yeah. Alright, so that's giving you the ability to actually label the um, the variables, alright? That's the only thing I was generally trying to show you there. Cause that we have so much we have so much drugs. <laughs> yeah. So some, much. Some power pots, <laughs> yes. No <laughs> need any lions. Alright. <clears throat> Keep the keep the thing up, the, the monitor up. Okay. All right. So the only thing, or let me see the serial monitor. All right. So we, so after that, we really thing only we really did is put in an if statement. All right. And okay. So you have that if there because if statement is called if. So it, yeah. if statement has two make make components. The value inside the parentheses or the stuff inside the parentheses um, is a condition. All right, so you say if this condition is true, do whatever's in the side of the brackets. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Now, take out the else statement. Just just, just delete or copy it. If I from else down to the parentheses, or nope, nope, down if. Hmm. Keep going down a little bit lower. Oh. Right there. Copy is that. that. Is that? No, no. The entire, the next one, two, the next four lines. All this. No. Go up. Just the, the brackets of the else thing. Right now, one more. Copy it and then delete it. Or just cut. That works too. That works too. All right. Now re-upload the code and tell me what is different. <clears throat> Okay. No. What changes on your on your circuit? The light, it's just on and off, and it doesn't fade. Well, no. Try Actually, now it's just it's just on solid now. Exactly. So you turn you told it to turn on at a certain yeah, but you never told it to turn off. Okay, I see. Does that make sense? There you go. Now I heard a little. I heard something click in your head there. Yeah. All right. So if you do, you know, you can only use else is always in combination with an if. I don't think it's in combination with anything else. Um, but that's the main part. Main part there. And with the if statement too, let me. Um, you can put. Um, it doesn't have to be just one condition, right? You can put in actually multiple different conditions. Using ands and ors, and actually, I'm about to bring you up. I'm about to take control to show you that. That is something I do. Okay. Hang on one second. Uh, one second. One second. Um, let's see. Is David, you still here? Yeah, I'm going to show you the, I think you've seen the robot once before, David. Uh, I'll show you another one here in a minute. We, we, we upgraded it.
<laughs> Here's the new robot, David. Y'all should be getting it pretty soon. This week, I hope. Cool. Oh, that's my brother. Be something like that. Do you see it, David? <laughs> But I think we only have one motor in our box. Yeah, this one comes with motors. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, this one, you're getting two motors and gearboxes with this. Yeah, what are we going to do with that one motor that's in the box and the servos? Uh, I might use the servo, the one motor that's in the box. I'm going to use it for the transistor thing, but that would be about it. It's really only, like, the only purpose for it is to demonstrate a transistor. Um, and that's, uh, that's going to actually be I think next class, or no, I think I'm going to start with next class. All right, hang on, let me get back on track here. All right, so, oh yeah, one thing too, uh, in your kit, so using the analog read, Avery, right, you have this thing here, can you, you can see my screen, right? Avery. David, can you hear me? Avery. <coughs> Avery. Avery, can you hear me? Give me chat block, chat block or, or something. Let me know if you can just hear me. Type something. I kind of hear you there. Are you breathing? Just let me know if you can hear me. Stop. I'm muting you. You can still hear me, right, David? Okay. You, can you hear me clearly? Okay. Avery, the problem's on your side, brother. How you doing, David? Good, how are you? Quite well. Okay, so I can't hear you. Oh. What grade are you in, David? About doing engineering now? That, that's selling you on it yet? Um, 
I'm more into website design. What's that? I'm more into website design and computer programming. Nah. You did computer science. Mm hmm Which is a branch of engineering. You got to do a lot of discrete mathematics stuff. Yeah. 